As the French philosopher Descartes said, God made the world, but the Dutch made Holland. And there's nowhere more uniquely, beautifully Dutch than Amsterdam, this wonderful city that seems almost to float on the water. But for the last 10 years, this has also been a city with a gaping cultural hole where its heart should be. This is the Rijksmuseum, one of the world's great museums. Holland's equivalent to the National Gallery or the Louvre. And yet, for the last 10 years, it's been closed to the public, undergoing a massive restoration. The closure of the Rijksmuseum was a big hole in the national life. We missed all these beautiful things. Can you imagine the French rolling the Mona Lisa through the streets? Only in Holland would this happen. I consider the Rijksmuseum the nucleus, or the, more or less the egg uh, <laughs> we crawled out. There are very few countries where the National Museum has been entirely rethought, reinvented. It really is amazing. Everybody's very excited in having it open again. The national treasures of the Dutch people are inside this museum. Wow. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. For over a decade, people all over the museum world, but above all, the Dutch people have been waiting, 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 but now the wait is over. So join me on a journey to rediscover the treasures of a great nation. So, welcome to the Rijksmuseum 2013. This is the scene of probably the most remarkable, the most expensive, the most ambitious remodelling of one of the world's major museums ever undertaken. The whole place is buzzing with crowds, with journalists, with TV crews, but actually, compared to what it's been like in the last few weeks, it's relatively calm. It's been a hive of activity here. They've been frantically putting the last touches to their great museum, and we have had a backstage pass. Over the last few weeks, we've been privileged enough to watch how the Dutch have reinvented their single greatest monument to their past. It's all happening. Paintings are arriving in crates. They're coming out of their boxes. They're going up on the walls. The whole place is buzzing with machinery. Which painting is this? Love Letters. That's Vermeer's Love Letters. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> so there's a Vermeer under there. Yes. And you're not shaking. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Take a painting and I put it on the wall. You're going to okay. do that now? Yeah. Uh, um, second. Thank you. That is, I can't, this is one of the great paintings in the world. The gentleman behind the camera, he doesn't want to be on TV, he doesn't like being on TV, but he has agreed to be on TV to hang the picture, so that's, we really appreciate that. Oh, wow. It. it looks like it was painted yesterday. Isn't it fantastic? The glass is clean. The glass is clean. What a beautiful painting. Now, the Rijksmuseum's collections are jaw-droppingly rich and varied. There are treasures from Asia and the Far East. There are masterpieces of painting like this, Monet, or over here, a wonderfully piercing self-portrait by none other than Vincent van Gogh. But this is also a museum with a single overriding mission, to tell the story of the Dutch past, to bring Holland to life.
Now, in the past, the Rijksmuseum organised its collections on rather traditional academic lines, department by department, you know the sort of thing. Over here we've got glass, over there we've got silver. A gallery three is for ceramics, galleries 22 to nine for painting. But they've done away with all of that now and in a very bold, daring and highly effective way, what they've done is they've brought all of the arts together and involved them in this great chronological sweep through history. And it's quite some achievement. 80 galleries, 8,000 objects, and 800 years of history. So you really do need more than an hour or two to get to know this place. The Rijksmuseum is about the Dutchness of Dutchness. It was constructed in the 19th century as a symbol for the Dutch nation and it houses the treasures of the Netherlands. I think anyone coming to Amsterdam for the first time and looking at the Rijksmuseum can't fail to be struck by how unique it is, how extraordinary it is. There is no other building in the city like it. It's this wonderful neo-Gothic romantic fantasy temple to art and nowadays it's one of the most popular most loved buildings in all of Holland but it was not always so when it was first unveiled in 1885 it was regarded with horror how catholic with its stained glass windows its resemblance to a cathedral the flamboyance of its color and its architecture many people saw it as a kind of a fishbone lodged in the throat of the Dutch state, which was inherently a Protestant state. How dare Kuyperus, the architect, a Catholic, have erected this building in the heart of Amsterdam? And the king of the time, William III, refused to set foot in the building. My favourite detail on the whole building is that statue. Do you see up there in the corner? That is Kuyperus himself, the architect with his beard, looking rather furtively around the corner of the building, as if, almost as if to say, oh, I'm a Catholic, I'm in a Protestant world, have I got away with it? When we moved into this building in the 19th century, the collection only had 700 paintings. Now we have 6,000. So the collection has grown a lot. This meant that in the 20th century, the decorations, original decorations of the building were obscured. So the building slowly disappeared. And I think that what the renovation did is that it gave the building back its words and the building speaks again. And now it's in harmony with the objects. Now, I remember coming to the Rijksmuseum 20 years ago, and believe me, the transformation is truly mind-boggling. Look at this great central courtyard full of light, space, a sense of air. Where I'm standing used to be underwater. Now, when they decided to modernise and renovate this vast building, there were to be no half measures. Large parts of it were completely gutted. In the beginning, the process was supposed to take three years, long enough, you might think. In the end, it's taken them 10 years to complete, which gives you some idea of the many obstacles they had to overcome. The sympathetic new design is as elegantly minimal as Kuyper's original was extravagant, and the delicate task of resurrecting the museum was undertaken by Spanish architects, Cruz Ortiz. Being asked to design the new Rights Museum, it's not quite like being asked to walk on water, but <laughs> you've certainly been asked to build on water. Mm -hmm. Last time I was here, there was a canal down there. Yeah. What have you done with it? It was, not the, it was the sea, actually it was not a canal. Yeah, when you dig more than one and a half meter in Amsterdam, you are under the level of the sea, so actually you have all the water uh, pouring up. And now this building has risen, yes. almost sort of from the ashes of its former self. Yeah. It strikes me that you've been very sensitive to the original architecture. This building, it's a perfect example of the interest of the architecture at the end of the 19th century. When doing this kind of task, you pay a 
tribute, let's say that way, to the system building. Now the whole project was scheduled for completion in 2008. So what caused this immense delay? Was it some astonishing aquatic engineering problem, some logistical issue? No, it was a uniquely Dutch issue. I think the biggest problem was the bicycle tunnel. You're kidding me. <laughs> the bicycle tunnel was yes. the... Well, how, put me in the well, picture. The, the, when they decided to re uh, renovate this museum, they also wanted to modernize it. And they created a new space in the middle of the museum. So they closed down the bicycle tunnel. And that would have been the central entrance. Now, this central passageway, it's known as the city's gateway, runs right through the centre of the Rijksmuseum, connecting the outskirts of the city to the centre. And before the renovations began, it was used by more than 13,000 cyclists a day. So when the architects responsible for the revamping suggested it be transformed, split into two levels, there was mass revolt. Holland's cycling lobby, hugely powerful here, fell over their handlebars in disgust. They staged demonstrations, sit-ins. They forced a major re-evaluation of the whole architectural transformation of the museum. When Kuipers built the Rijksmuseum in the 1880s, it was at the border of the city. And he built it over one of the important entrance roads, and he built it like a city gate, and it was meant to go under it. So from an architectural point of view, from an urban point of view, I think that we should stick to it. I always agree that the bicycle could ride through, but I wanted the bicycle to ride in both laterals of the passage. The passage are three bays. Ah, okay. We wanted the bicycle to ride in the two laterals, but the bicycle wanted to ride in the center, where the power is. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. In the end, um, the architect had to redesign the whole plan and that caused a major delay and a major uh, extra uh, money. The protests over the bike passage added years to the project and the passions raised show the peculiar nature of the Dutch attitude to this museum. It's theirs, their national space. What does the Rijksmuseum mean to the people of Amsterdam, to the people of Holland? What does it mean to you? The treasures of the country are held here. This is the main museum, it's the mother of all museums. And I like that, so this is the mother, yeah. the mother of the Netherlands. Yeah. We should consider it as our own national identity and uh, the basis where we come from. If we consider this a museum for foreign people or for once every 10 years to visit, we will lose our identity definitely. We're facing times where we look for our identity. Well, it's here and it was locked. We lost our concept of what it is to be Dutch, what our, where our cultural identity derives from. We lost it all and we have to be proud of our Dutch culture. If we understand where we came from, if we go to the Rijksmuseum, look thoroughly what was our basis? Where, where did Vermeer come from? Rembrandt, etc., Mondrian. Especially now, we needed our art. I think it's just fantastic. But what do you think? It really is amazing. It's, it's hung very beautiful with the colors on the wall, on the places where they re renovated the original details. It's been very... Well, amazing. The starry sky. Did you see the star starry sky from the uh, yes, right? yes, 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 yes. It's dazzling. All the way from Glasgow. Yeah. <laughs> That's our contribution. <laughs>